A warm welcome to our online Christmas service here in the South Warwickshire Seven Benefits. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas time our care and our delight to hear again the message of the angels, and in heart and mind to go unto Bethlehem and see this thing that is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore let us read and mark in Holy Scriptures the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought unto us in this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, for unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in these villages of South Warwickshire. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us pray in his name for the poor and the helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us thank God for all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore, and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises we humbly offer up to the throne of grace, in the words which Christ himself has taught us saying together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine be the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us. Amen. One notice before our first carol. I'm not going to be announcing any of the carols or the readings, so we'll run straight through our service. Once in
The first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Thanks be to God. Up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, 
to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. Thanks be to God. So The third lesson is taken from Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. 
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Thanks be to God.
fourth reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may too go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their own country by another route. Thanks be to God. Bible reading is taken from the first chapter of the Gospel according to St John, beginning at the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in the closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The South Yorkshire-based poet and author Gervais Finn was a former school's inspector, and this gave him ample material for his many books, including this rather wittily uh, entitled volume, A Wain in a Manger, which records um, eyewitness accounts of many school nativity plays. Let me read a, an extract to you. The little actor in one version of the Christmas story that I attended looked very disgruntled. I heard later that the lead part of Joseph had been given to another child and the would-be thespian had not been too pleased. He had argued with his teacher to no avail and still wasn't happy when he was given the role of the innkeeper. But why can't I be Joseph? he persisted. Because you can't, the teacher had snapped. And if you don't stop whinging, William, you'll end up as a palm tree. And on the night of the performance, Mary and Joseph arrived at the inn and knocked loudly on the door. The innkeeper, who'd remained grumpy all through the rehearsals, opened the door with a great beaming smile. Innkeeper, innkeeper, Joseph began, we have travelled many miles in the darkness and the cold. May we come in? She can come in, the innkeeper said, pulling Mary through the door, but you can push off. Well, over the years, thousands of children will have delighted in playing the innkeeper in their school nativity play, relishing the moment they got to tell Mary and Joseph, I'm sorry, but there's no more room in the inn. And so Mary and Joseph would have been sent uh, to the only space left in Bethlehem, uh, a stable, or in some ancient traditions, a cave. It's a familiar part of the traditional Christmas story, but I'm afraid it's highly unlikely to have actually happened. In his book, Jesus Through Middle Eastern Eyes, the New Testament scholar, Kenneth E. Bailey, points out that given the strict rules of hospitality in the ancient Near East, no one would have turned away a visitor who was in need, let alone a heavily pregnant woman, especially one who was engaged to a descendant of the great Jewish King David. So where did we get the idea of the surly innkeeper from? Well, it all began with the King James Version of the Bible, which translates Luke chapter 2, verse 7 like this. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The picture of a pub or inn was chosen as something that the parishioners of 1611 uh, could relate to, but it is a mistranslation of the Greek word katalimatos. This is not the normal term for a pub or an inn, for example, uh, uh, as used in Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan. No, this is the normal word for a guest room, usually built on top of or alongside a typical one-roomed, flat-roofed peasant's home in those days. In fact, it's the very same word used later in Luke's Gospel for the upper room where Jesus ate the Last Supper with his disciples. And so the picture emerges of Mary and Joseph knocking on the door of a typical peasant's home in Bethlehem, perhaps of some distant relative. But because of the census, the guest room uh, is already full. And yet the strict rules of ancient Near Eastern hospitality dictate that this heavily pregnant woman must be taken care of. And so they would have been welcomed into the main living area of the home. What's more, recent archaeological studies in Israel and Palestine have found that animals were usually housed in a stable adjoining or next to the main living area of a typical Palestinian home. Uh, they could benefit from the animal's body heat and they could also hollow out uh, little mangers or feeding troughs in between the living area and the stable, an ideal place to lay a newborn baby. But so what, you may say? Apart from spoiling all those childhood nativity plays, what difference does this understanding of the Christmas story actually make to our lives today? Well, the answer is that it helps us to understand the real meaning of Christmas. How? Well, later in Luke's account, the angel says to the shepherds, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Shepherds in the first century were 
despised and mistrusted. Their occupation prevented them from attending the, the obligatory religious rituals, and they had a reputation for allowing their sheep to graze on other people's land. One rabbi of the time said, quote, you will find no more contemptible profession than that of shepherds. So shepherds were the first century equivalent of the cowboy builders and plumbers featured on programs like Rogue Traders and Watchdog. And yet God's long-awaited Messiah and Saviour was sent just for them. This will be a sign to you, said the angel to the shepherds. Why was this a sign to them? Because to find a baby lying in a manger could mean only one thing. God's chosen king, his Messiah, had been born in the living room of an ordinary peasant's home just like theirs. It would be a bit like the Messiah being born today to unmarried immigrants in a council flat in Coventry. And the message is clear. Jesus came to bring God's forgiveness to ordinary, everyday people, especially those despised, rejected and marginalised by others. This is why the birth of Christ is proclaimed as good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Not just for the religious, the respectable, the good people, the well-off, but good news for the poor, the destitute, good news for the failures, the non-religious, the atheists, good news for all the people. And that is why Jesus is good news for every one of us watching this today. Especially if, like the shepherds, we think we're too far gone for God to be interested in us. Jesus Christ came for people like us. He came to take away our guilt and shame by dying on a cross in our place. He came to set us free from sin and wrongdoing and to bring us back home to God. But if we think we're good enough without him, we'll never understand the real meaning of Christmas. For us, it will remain forever in the realm of the school nativity play, a tale only suitable for little children. So let us close with a Christmas prayer as we come afresh to God and to his son, Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have declared your love to humanity by the birth of your son, Jesus, at Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Help us to welcome him with gladness this Christmas and make room for him in our lives so that we may be at peace with you and with one another through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Collect Prep for the fourth Sunday of Advent. God, our Redeemer, we prepare the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son. Grant that as she looked for his coming as our Saviour, so may we be ready to greet him when he comes as our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Ooh. Mm -hmm.